There is no player on a college football field that is responsible for more eye-popping, jaw-dropping, highlight reel plays that can change the complexion of a game in an instant than a star number one wide receiver. In college football, it all starts with the recruiting process where all the best teams in the country will fight tooth and nail to secure the services of the next great star wide up. So I wanted to put 15 of the greatest college football wide receivers we have ever seen over the last 30 years and put them all into one recruiting class. We will watch the recruiting process and see where each one of these blue chip prospects ends up. Then I will sim through their four years of college and we will track how they progress over their careers. We'll watch some games live to see the stars match up, to see who will live up to their lofty recruiting rankings and who will fall short of expectations. I made each of them an 88 overall while still trying to make their ratings match up with their real life counterparts so their play style will be as similar as possible. And all of this is going to happen in the NCAA revamp mod. All right, boys, here we go. Top 15 wide receivers ever. Now, obviously, this is just my list. I know I'm going to get a ton of comments. People like, oh, you shouldn't have had this guy. You should have had this guy. I went for a little bit more new school. There is a few guys from the 80s, 90s, but it is a lot from the 2000s when the pass game really started to open up in college football. Some, you know, I was just going for name value too. So I know we're going to hear it, but I think it's a pretty good list. It's going to be really exciting to see where all these guys go. So how this works, guys, I'm going to be controlling air force i will not be recruiting anybody i will not be playing any games i will not be touching anything we're going to track where they end up sim through their four-year college careers and just you know see their stats jumping games and really just you know follow these 15 guys really closely so what i did is i made 15 brand new recruits they're all in high school right now in their senior year we're gonna hop in right now look at the recruiting board and we're gonna see where they're all kind of leaning then we're gonna simulate through one season periodically checking where each guy signs where they're kind of leaning then after they sign the next year they will be freshmen in college and you know we're gonna track their freshman stats stats to look at freshman all-american teams hop in some games if we get good matchups between them so this is actually the third time i've done this i've already done this for qbs and running backs if you want to check that out i did top 13 qbs top 15 running backs i will link that down in the description pretty interesting i think these videos turn out really cool i think they're really unique and i've never seen anyone do anything like them so i've already made all 15 we're gonna skip to recruiting right here and now we're just gonna see where all 15 of these guys are kind of leaning so we're gonna go all prospects then we are gonna sort by wide receivers and we have 15 of the best wide receivers ever first we have peter warwick he's coming out as the number one wide receiver now i made them all 88 overall but i did you know put their stats to kind of reflect how good they were in real life like peter warwick fast super shifty amazing with the ball in his hands now his first is florida state which is kind of wild then florida which i don't think florida state fans would like to see georgia the u and alabama next up we have the goat randy moss who's also florida state and that's actually where he went to originally but i believe before he went to marshall he was at florida state and got kicked off the team then alabama lsu notre dame boise state i also tried to make sure i put them all in their same state they are from and i tried my best with the city some of the cities aren't available though pretty sure i got every one of the states right okay then we have Kayvon austin and he's a m georgia bama clemson michigan are his tops now obviously this is really early too this is just kind of where they're leaning at the start but this will all change as we get going you'll see you know a lot of these guys will end up at totally different schools um aj green we got clemson georgia north carolina state wake forest bama then we have tim brown one of our more old school guys he went to notre dame in real life but here we got lsu bama florida state uh florida usc georgia so that's pretty interesting then we have desmond howard the michigan man and he is first going to ohio state which i know michigan fans would not love then we have west virginia michigan still in their pit and notre dame then we have larry fitz from minnesota and he is leaning towards usc then alabama clemson oklahoma michigan so that's pretty interesting fitzy going to usc would be pretty 
wild. Then we have Justin Blackman. He's going Notre Dame, Bama, Florida, Georgia, LSU. He has a bunch of guys still in the running, so he is completely wide open. Then we have Devontae Smith, another Florida State. So Florida State early looks like they're really in the running for a ton of these guys. Florida State, LSU, Bama, Texas, Georgia, Oregon. A lot of guys in the running for that as well. Then we have the GOAT, Jerry Rice. He went to, uh, I I can't remember what his school was. It was like a small Div 2 school. They played like five wide when he was like go coming out in the 80s. Pretty wild offense. But he is looking at Georgia, Northwestern, Michigan, Bama, Clemson, Penn State. Then we have the GOAT, Percy Harvin. I love Percy Harvin. Clemson, which I like. He kind of fits in Clemson. Then a and OU, Baylor, Georgia. Then we have Jamar Chase, and he's first LSU. So that'd be interesting. Will he go back to where he made his name? Texas. Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Calvin Johnson, also Georgia. So Georgia's in the running for Jerry Rice and Calvin Johnson in the lead. Then we have Clemson, Tennessee, North Carolina. It looks like Clemson's in the running for a lot of these guys. Then we have Julio Jones, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Nebraska, LSU, Georgia, Michigan. Then lastly, we have Michael Crabtree, who's Alabama, USC, Georgia are basically all tied. Then Clemson, OU, Ohio State. So that, I believe, yeah, that was 15. That should be all of our guys that is where they're all kind of leaning we can quickly look so for their 40 times Tavon Austin 426 Randy Moss at six foot 490 pounds running 428 obviously these like four five six for Larry Fitzgerald these 40 times are a little bit made up like you know not always going to be a total reflection of how fast they're going to end up but I mean I think I did make Tavon Austin and uh, Randy Moss the two fastest so that does check out uh there's their squat and bench press so this is just going to give us a little snapshot on where all these guys are leaning but this will not be the final you know this is not where they're going now what we're going to do is we're going to sim to the start of the season then i'll sim to about week four of season one now technically these guys all still be in high school and they'll be getting recruited so we're not going to care about you know anything that's happening in the season we're just going to follow along with their recruiting get some updates see where the guys are leaning and then go from there all right so we're at the start of the season here we're just going to sim to week six and we'll take a look at where everyone's kind of leaning and recruiting all right so here we are week six let's look at the recruiting we're gonna go check out our wide receivers see where these guys all have moved so they're gonna be decently far into the recruiting process right now and peter warwick looking almost locked in at florida state the other two florida schools are on the outside looking in maybe have an outside shot but warwick looks pretty locked in there then we have randy moss going to notre dame or Boise State. I'm hoping Notre Dame. I think that would be cool. Boise State, I mean, he's going to feast on some, some competition, but that's kind of crazy. Tavon Austin looking like A&M or Michigan. I, I mean, he seems like he could fit at A&M pretty good. Okay, AJ Green, Clemson, North Carolina State or Wake Forest it is definitely looking like Clemson is going to lock down AJ though. Then we have Tim Brown and it is either Florida or SC with SC having a pretty decent lead there then we have desmond howard and it's either michigan or ohio state but he is leaning ohio state wow michigan fans are not gonna like that then larry fitzgerald is almost basically locked in 100 percent at clemson so they have and they had aj green so if they got fitzgerald and aj green just monsters and then notre dame looks like they're gonna get blackman maybe florida and i believe who else was yeah and they could get randy moss as well then Jerry Rice is looking like he's going to end up at Northwestern. So kind of, I don't know. I kind of can see that. He's, I don't think he's going to put up crazy numbers for them, but uh, I don't know. He's a smart guy. They're a smart school. Okay. Percy Harvin looks like he's going to go to AM. They could get Percy Harvin and Tavon Austin at AM. Just two water bugs. Okay. So we have our first full on recruitment. Calvin Johnson is going to Georgia. Okay. Calvin. And then Julio is going to go to Nebraska, it's looking like. So these guys are not going to the most powerhouse passing offenses ever, but, and then it looks like Crabtree is going to go to SC and that is our guys. So that is where they're all leaning. This is still somewhat early. Um, those guys are not obviously locked in other than Calvin. So things can change, but that's going to give us a pretty good snapshot. Okay. We are going to sim just to like week 14 here. Then we'll take another look 
uh, see where everyone's sitting. And then after that, we're just going to sim to national signing day. All right, week 14. Let's look at the recruiting. A lot of these guys should either be pretty locked in or very close. So let's take a look. So Peter Warwick locked in at Florida State. Wow. Then Randy Moss looking like he's going to Notre Dame. Boise State has an outside chance. AM looking like they're going to get Tavon. AJ Green is going to Clemson. Tim Brown looking like SC. Desmond Howard ends up at Ohio State. So Larry Fitz is either going to Michigan or Clemson. Clemson, just very, very close. He could team up with AJ Green, though. I'll be really interested to see if we get, you know, a few of these guys going to the same school and just could get one of the best receiving duos ever. Justin Blackman looking like Notre Dame. So him and Randy Moss could end up there. Devontae Smith looking like Texas. LSU still has an outside shot, but I'd like to see him in Texas. So Jerry Rice is going to Northwestern. I don't know why that just seems fitting. Percy Harvin, AM. Jamar Chase might end up at Texas. We could get Devonte Smith and Jamar Chase at Texas. I'd actually love to see that. Calvin Johnson, we already knew, locked in at Georgia. Julio is either going to Notre Dame or Nebraska. So you could get Julio, Randy Moss, and, and one other guy at, at Notre Dame. Wow. And then it looks like Crabtree's going to SC, and I think Tim Brown was going to SC as well. Who's the other guy who's maybe going to go to Notre Dame? Justin Blackman. Wow. Okay. So that's kind of where everyone's leaning. This is going to get pretty crazy at the end to see how many guys we get at the same school. So now I'm just going to sim to National Signing Day, and we are going to take a look. All right. Here it is, National signing day this is what this is where the whole video gets made right here see where all these boys end up who's teaming up who's going where we already knew peter warwick randy moss is going to boise state <laughs> Wow. So from Marshall to Boise, Idaho. There we go. Tavon is going to AM. We already knew AJ at Clemson. We, Tim Brown, we were pretty sure was going to SC. Desmond Howard, Ohio State. Larry Fitzgerald, Clemson. So that's our first duo is AJ and Larry. Then we have Justin Blackman. So Notre Dame went from having the best trio to, I don't even know if they're going to get Eddie. He goes to Florida. Devonte ends up at LSU. Spurs Texas. Jerry Rice there. Percy Harvin. So we had Percy Harvin and Tavon at AM. Jamar Chase does end up at Texas. Calvin, Georgia. Julio, Nebraska. Michael Crabtree at SC. So pretty crazy. I think we have three schools with two or more players. That is going to make it interesting for sure. A few shockers uh, like the Boise State, Northwestern, and, and some guys went to just not the best passing schools like Calvin going to Georgia. Are they going to throw the ball in Nebraska? You know, will they throw the ball a ton Northwestern? So we'll see. But there we go. That is where everyone is going to end up. So now basically I'm just going to sim to the start of this first season. We're going to check out where everyone sits on the depth chart. Then we're going to track how their stats are looking through the first season. And then usually the first season, I don't really watch any games. But by the time we get to the second and third season, if we have really good matchups between some of our receivers, we will hop in and see how they are doing. All right. So here we are in week one of this their first season now we are gonna go look at the roster see where each guy's one of these guys sits i also want to look at their quarterbacks to see kind of like obviously they're going to be pretty dependent on having a great qb is going to be a determining factor how you know much work these guys are going to get so we're going to start in boise we have randy moss and he is already walking in as the number one option 98 speed absolute freak show six foot four let's look at their qb we also want to see if they have a young QB. So they have Taylor Green, who's an 87 overall and only a sophomore. So honestly, that could work. Randy could put up some freaking stats. Okay. Now we're going to go to Clemson and we're going to look. So they have AJ Green and Larry Foote should be their number two and number three receivers. Six foot three, six foot four. They're going to also have Bo Collins and they should have a good young quarterback in Club Nick. So these two are set up for 
really good success and obviously they're gonna this hunter johnson another freshman they're gonna recruit good qbs so those two picked well then we're gonna go down to florida with justin blackman now his qb is a junior decent um then they have a young freshman angle who could maybe maybe become someone if we look at receivers he is already starting out he's gonna be a starter number two wide receiver behind xavier henderson so you know what he walked into a pretty decent position. Then we go to Florida State with Peter Warwick. He's already going to start as their number two receiver behind Johnny Wilson, the six foot seven freak show. And then they have Jordan Travis for one year. Then they have a freshman 82 in Duffy. So, okay. So honestly, I'm liking Peter Warwick. He stepped into a good spot. Okay. Then we have Georgia absolutely loaded. And Calvin is going to come in and be their number two receiver already. Six foot five, 95 speed along with mcconkney for qb they lost ensign bennett they have some good young qbs this stockton only at so honestly i don't know how much pa passing georgia is going to do but as far as decent qb opportunities and playing time calvin is going to be in a really good spot then we're going to go down to lsu now we have Devonte smith already their number one wide receiver stepping in right away um Garrett Neusmeyer is going to be their starting quarterback. A sophomore, 84. That is decent. Not great, but should be decent. Then we're going to go to Julio at Nebraska. Now, already stopping in clear cut number one wide receiver without a doubt. They have Jeff Sims, who is going to be a good QB for him this year, but he is leaving. This is his senior year. Then they have Chuba Purdy who looks like he could be decent and then they have nothing. They have two young freshmen who do not look good. So I wasn't, I don't know about this for Julio, this Nebraska. I don't think that was necessarily the right pick, but we will see. Okay, then we have Northwestern with Jerry Rice, obviously gonna step in, be their number one option, pretty clear cut. Looking at their QB situation, they have Brendan Sullivan, who's an 84 overall sophomore. You know what? I kind of like that. You're going to get him for three years. Just hope by your senior season, if you're Rice, this Lausch guy or someone can come in and become a really good player your senior year so honestly jerry not bad we'll see how much they throw the ball that is going to be really the deciding factor there okay then ohio state now this is a little different so desmond howard is going to be fighting with fleming to be the starter and all three of these guys are juniors so unless he passes fleming here he really might not play for two years which is way different than anyone else we've seen so far for quarterbacks they still have cj stroud for this year and next they have kyle mccord they have devin brown so you know what he came into a good spot if he can beat out Fleming and get on the field. If he stuck behind Fleming for two years, that might have been a big mistake. Okay, then we're going to go down to Texas with our boy Jamar Chase. Now, behind Xavier, we're okay, so similar. Jamar has to get ahead. Whittington is a senior, so at least next year, Jamar will be on the field no matter what, but he basically has to get ahead of Casey Kane this year to even see the field. Now, if he does, who are their QBs? They have Quinn Ewers for still three more years, possibly after this. Uh, Malik Murphy, young guy. So uh, this could have been a really, really good for pick for Jamar. As long as he can get on the field this year, even if he has to wait one year, that's not the end of the world. Okay, and then kind of similar here. So it looks like Tavon Austin and Percy Harvin are going to be duking it out for the number three position. Then you have Aeneas Smith, who's going to be leaving at, after this year. So both of them will be starters by next year, as long with Moose Muhammad. So then if we look at their QB situation, uh, so you're going to really need Wiegman. Wiegman really needs to take a step next year, become a mid 80s, mid by the end of it, a mid 90s player. Playing time wise, they come into a decent spot. Not great QB wise. And then last but not least, we have USC with two more. We have Jordan Addison as a senior. We have Gary Bryant Jr. We have Brendan Rice, Mario Williams. So these guys are not, look at their receiving core. So Tim Brown and Michael Crabtree will not see the field this year, but they have three seniors. So these three are going to be gone next year. How many more years is Caleb? So 
Caleb is gone after next year. So they'll be with Caleb next year for sure, which should be an absolute fireworks show. Then they have uh, Miller Moss should be the next QB up. So sophomore 84, that is decent. So that is kind of where everyone's sitting right now, guys. Actually, I want to see, do they have preseason All-Americans for freshmen? I wonder if they have that preseason all-americans do they have like a freshman preseason all-american team maybe not eh yeah no they don't so that is where everyone is sitting we're just gonna sim to probably week six and then we're gonna take a look at the stats and see where everyone's at all right, so we are in week seven. We are gonna take a look at the season stats, see where each one of these guys is sitting, see how it is going through this first season. So going to Boise State, we're gonna look at receiving and Randy Moss, it's tough to know exactly how many, I guess I could go more, oh no, it doesn't say how many games he's played, but number one receiver, 335 yards, two touchdowns, a 58 long, 83 yards per game. So that's pretty good. Yards after the catch, obviously randy is looking like an absolute freak show so far then we're gonna go to clemson and we have we'll go by yards shipley collins so aj green only has six catches on the year fitzy has 131 two touchdowns for aj um if we go yards per game yeah 30 and nine and a half so this is a year one for these two they are coming into kind of more of a loaded situation but i, I was expecting a little bit more okay now we're gonna go to florida and xavier henderson so blackman okay so 305 yards just off the team lead in in receiving yards five touchdowns 50 yards per game so right now randy is at 83 so randy is absolutely running the show right now go to florida state johnny wilson dominating benson so warwick not getting a ton of run 111 yards and a touchdown 22 yards per game go to georgia with calvin a decent start eight catches 144 yards that was always my worry here is they just don't throw the ball a ton at Georgia. He's getting 28 yards per game. Maybe by next year when he's the number one target, if he passes McConkney, which might even be tough to do, uh, you know, he's going to be their third option. Like that's some great weapons and they're all big and physical, but you, you, they just don't throw the ball enough at Georgia. Okay, going down to LSU, Kyron Lacey is somehow just absolutely out touching Devonte by a ton even though Devonte is the higher overall two touchdowns for Devonte, 30 yards per game if he was in Lacey's spot Lacey's just getting all the work right now going to now Nebraska with Julio this could get intro okay so I was a little worried for Julio that they just weren't going to pass the ball enough but 446 yards um one touchdown only but 89 yards per game so he's actually leading the way there Purdy I guess Purdy okay or no Sims that right that was the issue too sims is a good player right now but sims is gone after this year then what happened so that that is going to be kind of the sticking point there okay we're going to go down to northwestern and jerry rice 557 yards 22 yards per reception three touchdowns 111 a game okay so jerry freaking rice this this could low-key be the move. Sullivan, clearly they're going to pass the ball at Northwestern. And they're basically just going to him. Some A little bit to Briggs, a little bit to their tight end. But they are going to Jerry Rice and they are force-feeding the ball. That is an absolute smash right now. Okay, we're going to go down to Ohio State. We're not going to be expecting a ton okay desmond howard so it looks like he was able to secure that number three receiver role he's behind uh eubank and harrison obviously but you know for where he's at he's averaging 18 and a half you know 40 yards a game three touchdowns you will take that for desmond howard 100 percent okay now we're gonna go down to texas with our boy jamar and he isn't really playing a ton so he is only getting you know 90 yards he has a ton of touchdowns for the limited work but he's not one one of their main receiving options right now looks like he's like fourth fifth on the depth chart but as he goes on should improve obviously okay we're gonna go to a m and oh so neither percy or tavon is really in the rotation now not getting a ton of work i was kind of worried here i don't know how good this passing offense is gonna be they have a senior quarterback but he's only an 82 overall Ugh, not loving that for the a m boys 
Then last but not least, we have our two SC guys. Probably not getting a ton of work here. Yeah, uh, neither of them even have a catch. So they are pretty far down the totem pole here. Um, but by next year, and Caleb Williams will be back for his senior year. Next year, that could be a really, you know, kind of a smash for those two. Okay, we're just going to sim to week 13 here. Get another little update. All right, so we're a little further down the line. I want to kind of see what the top 25 is looking like. Not Our guys aren't going to be making a huge impact right here. USC right at the top. Ohio State, one of our teams. Georgia right there. Two losses, though. Uh, Florida State. So our guys went to obviously some big-time programs who should be making some noise as we go. But that's kind of where everyone's sitting. I'm going to go look at the stats once again. Actually, let's look at the highs. I don't obviously none of our guys are going to be in the Heisman watch probably the whole time as wide receivers, but you never know. Okay. Now we're just going to look at their stats again. So we're going to go to receiving yards, go down to Boise, Idaho and see the show that Randy Moss is putting out there. Okay. So all of a sudden his tight end is kind of catching up to him, but 700 yards, five touchdowns. 71 a game so it went down i think he was in the mid 80s before so it went down a little bit but you know what like this is going to kind of be a smash for him you know he's got a young quarterback throwing him the ball who's already in 87 like he he, he might have picked the right school he's going to be playing weaker competition and just absolutely smash him we're going to clemson uh yeah so aj actually had a bit of a bounce back so he started slow i think you'll need three receptions last time we we looked at these guys now he's the third leading receiver on the team so He's starting to get some work. Larry Fitz a little bit behind him, but uh, yeah, they're, they're both looking pretty good. I mean, pretty decent start there. Overall, they, they did pick a good situation to go to. If we look at Florida and Blackman, still the second leading receiver. He is this Xavier Henderson who really is, you know, kind of running the show here. But for a freshman, 40 yards per game, 413 yards you are going to take that if you're florida every single time looking at state johnny wilson running shit then you have their running back getting a lot of work and then peter work in third so once again i actually think this is a pretty good start for work and i do think it's a good situation okay then we go to georgia and calvin I, this is about where he was last time they, they're really just going to these two a ton mcconkney and bowers and and calvin just isn't getting a ton of work like now this mcsaint is right behind him now as well so only 22 yards per game decent for calvin but i mean if you're georgia you really he's an absolute freak of nature i'd be trying to get him the ball more we look to lsu Devontae, second third leading receiver second in yards third in receptions four touchdowns 50 yards a game so honestly for Devontae, that is a really good start by next year he should be the clear cut number one no questions asked okay now nebraska and julio jones there we go 798 yards four touchdowns 79 yards per game i I think he's in first right now for the guys we watched but we have jerry rice and last time we checked he was an absolute smash could he be at 900 a thousand receiving yards only 800 so him and julio aren't that far off he looks like he maybe came down to earth a little bit but still yeah so him and julio are basically bang on right next to each other kind of just both really dominating right now which which does make sense go to ohio state desmond howard still their third leading receiver averaging 18 yards per catch so he's been absolutely electric when he gets the ball um good leading the team in touchdowns 45 yards per game this is a much better start to the freshman year i was a little worried for desmond but he you know he's totally performing and in a really good position okay we're gonna go down to texas with jamar who wasn't getting a ton of work last time we checked and still you know he's fifth six on the depth tree he's, he's not going to get a ton of work this year but i think by next year he should be well in the running does have four touchdowns 23 yards per, per game it's not bad it's not amazing go to a m and percy and tavon had a bit of an uptick since the last time we checked decent starts both very explosive 18 and 20 yards per touch so when they touch the football it is fireworks but they just aren't getting a ton of run. I just, I'm not super confident that position is going to end well for them. 
Then we're going to go down to USC. And yeah, our guys still don't even have a catch. So these two are just kind of buried. It's Crabtree and Tim Brown. But by next year, these two should be in a position to absolutely smash for Caleb Williams last year. So bide your time, but they are going to be in maybe the best position next year. So, okay, we are going to sim to the end of the year. Go through the conference championship. We'll look at the national title. This is year one, so it's kind of the warm up year. Um, we'll look at the final stats. And then uh, next year is really everybody's going to be taking that next step. We're going to see how much better each guy got. We're also going to watch some games next year. So if we get like Florida versus Florida State, we could watch Blackman versus Warwick or something along those lines. So we're definitely going to do that. We'll also look at who are the preseason All-Americans. See if looking like Julio and Jerry Rice have a good shot to be preseason All-Americans is or not preseason, sorry, just freshman All-Americans as well. All right, so that's who won. Jameer Gibbs won the Heisman for Bama, just beat out McBride. So somehow Air Force, who I'm controlling, made a bowl game, even though I'm literally doing nothing. But there we go. We only had two losses, so apparently we're pretty good. Um, can look at the top 25 quickly. So looks like Bama washing. Okay, actually, uh, maybe we'll look at the bowl games. Yeah, we'll look at the bowl games here. We'll see if any of our guys had good records. Um, so Boise State is going to play in the Arizona Bowl for our guy, Randy Moss. Texas is going to play Miami for Jamar. Nebraska, 7-5 and five with Julio playing Texas Tech. Florida, 8-4 and four playing Iowa State. LSU, 7-5 and five playing Penn State. That seems like one loss versus five losses in a bowl. Not the most evenly matched. USC one loss playing Temple somehow. Ohio State one loss playing Oklahoma. Florida State versus Georgia. So that's Peter Work versus Calvin Johnson. That's pretty interesting. That's a bowl game next year we'd probably watch. Like they're just not in the position right now, all of them necessarily. Okay, and then Alabama versus Washington in the national final. Crazy. Okay. We are just going to sim through this. We'll see who the national champion is. We will see who's the freshman All-American, and we'll look at the final stats for all these guys. All right, let's look at the All-Americans. Let's see who the freshmen were. We got Rucker, and Julio did make it. So one of our receivers only, but hey, Julio, from what I, when I was looking, looked like he was absolutely balling. Okay. So this is going to be their final stats as freshmen. Let's take a look. So for Boise State, the freak Randy Moss finished with 847. So he started really strong and kind of tailed off. Actually wasn't even their leading receiver. That was Caples, Latrell Caples. Um, so yeah, I don't know. He just, he tailed off a little bit for our guy, Randy. But I mean, he's a freshman. He's 640, he's 98 speed. I think he's going to be okay. Okay, let's go down to Clemson and AJ and Larry. Wow, they just did nothing to end the year. 20 yards per game basically for both of them, but next year should be in a really good spot. Okay, Florida with Blackman and Blackman kind of tailed off as well. 487, 37 yards per game. Decent, not amazing. If we go to Florida State, wow, Johnny Wilson, that might've led the country. Peter Work, third leading receiver right around there. Um, yeah, 580 yards, 41 per game. Decent, but uh, yeah, Wilson really is running the show there then calvin just fell off a map to end the year as well wow only 24 yards per game but you know what i mean i yeah i was just never sure about that signing for him with them actually throwing the ball lsu Devonte kind of kind of slowed down as well so a lot of guys kind of almost hit, hit like a freshman wall it seems like but i think by next year that should be figured out okay nebraska this should be a smash for julio 1200 yards as a freshman wow seven touchdowns average 92 yards per game was an all-american freshman all-american makes a hundred percent sense 17 average yards per reception julio was 
unbelievable. Jerry, very good. He started amazing. He kind of tailed off a little bit. Still 79 yards per game. Six touchdowns. You will take that. Ohio State. Uh, Desmond Howard looked like he kind of hit a wall as well, but still the fourth leading receiver. Ohio State actually didn't throw the ball a ton. It looks like they ran the ball an absolute ton, even though they have CJ Stroud as a 98, which is a little scary, but you know, what can you do? Okay, now we're going to go down to Texas with our boy Jamar, and he had 286. Definitely trailed off at the end there. AM, Percy and Austin, once again, like every time they touch the ball, it is an absolute dynamite show, but they're just not touching the ball a ton. Um, yeah, actually, I wonder if they got any. Uh, yeah, Percy had 29 rushes, actually, which is kind of a lot. For 122 yards so that's kind of interesting but i guess i can always check uh, only certain guys are going to be getting many many carries but that is something i can check and then t usc i don't think these guys are going to end up with anything yeah no so they they didn't even really touch a field this year but they had two a thousand yard receivers and there's every chance these two are just gonna hop in and be kind of right in the running there so that is year one kind of the warm-up year but next year is when shit is gonna get wild so we're gonna sim to the start of next year we're gonna take a look at their depth chart and see who's gonna be the new starters who's really you know made huge improvements who's improved the most overall wise you know, that next year is where it's really going to get interesting. We're going to see who still has good QBs, whose QB has fallen off the map. So this is this is the big one. All right, here we are. And now we are going to see how much these guys improved, where they are all at, where they're going to be at on the depth chart. And this is going to be very, very interesting. So starting it at Boise State. So Randy Moss went up five overall points to a 93 clear cut wide receiver one. Here's a quick look at his stats. So you can kind of just see where he's at. He should be a smash. If I remember, he had a younger QB, yeah, only a junior. He went up to a 92. This, this, combo should absolutely shred this year okay now we're gonna go to clemson they have cade klubnik for two more years and 90 overall then they have a sophomore hunter johnson these two with larry and aj are in a smash but they are still behind bo collins so they should be getting a ton of work this year they have a crazy receiving core but they are not going to be the number one receivers okay so aj only went up to a 92 where larry went up to a 93 so he will be ahead of him on the depth chart but there we go very interesting then we're going to go to florida and justin blackman is the clear cut wide receiver one no ifs ends or buts about it he does have jack miller a senior this year should be able to move the ball around and then he is a sophomore kyle Engel, who's definitely gonna need to you know improve he could be get jalen kitten as well but he's definitely gonna need some big improvements from Engel between this year and next to you know have a consistent quarterback next year go to florida state they have tate roadmaker for this year good position and then they have aj duffy who's a sophomore 86 overall that is all good so you know warwick should be in a really good spot and he is the clear-cut number one receiver went up to a 93 overall you know no one is touching him this year Th this should be the year that work just absolutely blows up okay then we go to georgia and lad mcconkney is going to be the number one receiver then they have calvin then they have a donnie mitchell so they have two really good receivers but i think they're still gonna have brock bowers who's the best tight end in the country they have a good quarterback but they just don't throw the ball so i don't know i i don't know how much calvin's gonna do here okay we're gonna go down to lsu with our boy Devonte smith 93 overall clear cut number one option no ifs ands or buts he does have this garrett neusmeyer you know, 89 overall, he's going to have him for the next two more years. And then hopefully, you know, maybe this Brett Armstrong, somebody by his senior year is, you know, going to be good. But to get this guy for your sophomore and junior year, number one receiver, Devontae is in a really good spot. Okay, we got Jerry Rice at Northwestern and he had a great start, slowed down a little bit. He only went up to a 92, not a 93 like some of the guys, but obviously number one receiver, no, no questions asked. He is Brandon Sullivan for another two years and then this jack lausch guy if he can improve by his senior year jerry's gonna be in a good spot his whole time at northwestern it looks like okay we're gonna go 
to Ohio State. Now, Howard is going to be the number two receiver behind Amika. Fleming right behind him. I think they still have CJ Stroud, so should be in a good spot. And they have McCord next year. And they have Devin Brown, so they have a ton of receiving. They just, they ran the ball a ton. They have some really good receiver running backs. They ran the ball a ton last year. So we're going to see if they actually throw the ball because that is going to be the big thing there for Desmond. Okay, we're going to go to Jamar at Texas. So right here, Xavier Worthy, 99K. So Chase, Chase is the third receiver maybe behind Kane, which we don't love. I want him to be at least a, a second. We should have Quinn Ewers for another two years. Then you have Malik Murphy. So you just, you want to see him get the field. At least he's low end number three, but he could pass Kane and become the number two receiver as well. Okay, looking at AM and Tavon is a little ahead of Percy, but they are both going to see the field a ton. Moose Muhammad is going to be their number one. They are going to be their number two and number three receivers. We look at their QB. Connor Wiegman, we need him to develop into a good passer. He's only a sophomore, so he will be their starter in all, you know, likelihood for all three years. 85 as a sophomore is not bad. So you know what? Not a bad position for them. Okay. Then we're going to go down to USC. Now, obviously you have Caleb Williams as a senior, best player in college football. They have Miller Moss who will step in next year when these two are juniors to be the senior starting quarterback, but they don't really have anyone in the wings after that. They have Ray Rell who maybe in two years could be something, but they're going to be in a good spot over the next two years. Okay. So Crabtree and Brown are going to be their number Number two and number three receivers, which we will take. They basically got no run last year. Now, all of a sudden, they are stepping in and going to be playing quite a bit. So everybody should be in a much better position than last year. This year, we're going to sim through four or five weeks, go in, see where they all sit. And then this year, we're definitely going to try to get in and watch some games as well. All right. So we just sim through the fifth week. Um, let's maybe we'll start with the top 25. We'll kind of see that I'm recording this a few days after I recorded the first season. So... I have to get my bearings a little bit, remembering who all our teams are and stuff. But okay, so Bama, Washington. So I know we have two guys on USC, Florida State, Ohio State. So we have some guys right in that top, top level, Georgia, bunch of undefeated teams. So any of those teams could you know easily make the national championship game, which would be cool to see with some of our guys. Uh, if we look, I was just seeing if any of our guys, none of our receivers, it's going to be pretty tough for any of our receivers to win the Heisman, but definitely just kind of interesting to take a look at. Okay, now we can go through the season stats. We're going to check where each one of these guys sits through the five games. So if we go down to Boise State and Randy Moss. So, so sophomore year and he is off to a hell of a start, like doubling up the next closest receiver on the team absolutely killing it what's his 111 yards per game so this is a huge jump for him absolutely massive 16 and a half yards per catch is very good as well okay then we're gonna get down to clemson with larry fitz and oh my goodness they just must not be throwing the ball they maybe have only played four games but even so like they're averaging 30 yards per game a piece their run game just must be bad club nick is they're just not letting Klubnik throw the ball. And he's, I mean, he's 90 overall junior. That's that's the type of guy you want throwing the rock. So hopefully they start to pick it up as we go. Uh, then we go to Florida, Justin Blackman. Him and Amari Black, who's their tight end, are their top you know, leading receivers. He's off to a really good start. Nothing wrong with that. Five touchdowns, 62 yards per game. So, so far, Randy, Randy Moss is definitely way out ahead is just the most impactful. But okay, yeah. So then Florida State, we got Peter Wark, 288. That seems pretty decent. Decent, nothing like extraordinary. Oh, but he's 96 yards a game. So he must be only played two games. So he's actually absolutely killing it. Um, I wonder, he might be someone who's even getting a little bit of work on the ground now. But yeah, so work absolutely killing. Or maybe that's, yeah, three games. He's at 288. Then we go to George and Calvin, 109. 27 yards per game there are other everyone else is a senior other than calvin so he just picked the wrong school because they just don't throw the ball enough but it is what it is okay we're gonna go to lsu and check out devonta smith 210 have they how many games have they played yeah so four games 
um, not great for Devonta, but like that's the thing with these receivers. They are so reliant on QE play. You just never know with these guys. So, so far, Peter Warwick and Randy definitely are off to the best starts. Okay, now we got Julio, who is the best receiver out of the whole group as a freshman. And this year not so much still decent 65 yards a game you're not gonna sneeze at that 21 receptions uh did he lose he, he might have lost his qb from last year which might have really hurt him julio is not quite living up to last year still still decent it's still early but yeah okay now jerry rice was probably the third receiver who really killed it and wow he's not even leading the team we have a different sophomore leading the team in receiving yards 46 yards per game for jerry wow okay then we got Ohio State and Desmond Howard. Five catches, 44 yards. This was another one where they just don't throw the ball quite as much last year as we would have thought. But yeah, I mean, they're just throwing it to their main two receivers and their tight end. So really, I guess, yeah, they're just basically throwing it to their number one receiver and their tight end. And everyone else is just getting just the scrap so that is not ideal for our guy there desmond howard okay we're going to texas with jamar chase and wow same thing they're basically just going to xavier worthy every play jamar is getting no run 23 yards per game so we've not really seen the huge steps up this year that we were hoping same here Tavon and percy 143 yards per game percy's got five tutties but you know both around 30 28 to 30 yards per game which is not great and then lastly sc i feel like these sc guys actually might be doing well so crabtree kind of stuck a little bit further down the depth chart but tim brown killing it 338 yards so he's i think the second most per game out of any of our receivers 84 yards per game didn't really get to play last year but you know right in the thick of things this year okay yeah, i'm gonna sim up to week 10 we're gonna you know go in we're gonna see where everyone's at at that point and then I'm going to see if we can find us a game to check out. We'll look for two teams with really good records deeper in the season who have, you know, one of our good, good receivers on them. All right. So we simmed through week 10. Let's go look at our top 25 again and see where everyone is sitting. So Washington undefeated Bama. So Florida State, we could see if Florida State has a good matchup with any of our teams coming up with Peter Warwick, Ohio State 8-0 sc eight and one i would like to see sc i don't know if we have any um guys in there anyone else in the pack off the top of my head georgia eight and one down to 13 florida five and three lsu right there okay okay yeah i might look through florida state schedule maybe see if we can find something there go look at the heisman watch real quick i doubt any of our receivers but yeah so jalen wright bunch of running backs five running backs in the running right there okay we're gonna look at the stats really quick i'm gonna go through it a little quicker here 873 for moss nine touchdowns 109 per game absolutely killing it larry fitz and aj just not not getting that run we would have liked They're around 30 yards per game yeah not not exactly ideal okay we're gonna go florida so Blackman and Amari Knee Black, these two are kind of just running the show for the passing game here. Good yards per game, 70 yards per game. You'll you'll take that for Blackman as a second year player. Okay, we're going to go Florida State, Peter Warwick, 624. So definitely doing well, 78 yards per game, definitely near the top of you know all our performers so far we go to georgia not looking great for calvin yeah so 25 yards per game just doesn't get the run there at georgia we would have liked if we go down to lsu we have Devonte 485 he's well beyond anyone else on the team in yards and yards per game but just not the most explosive passing offense overall yeah we're gonna go back down to nebraska julio 627 very good for him 69 so yeah like he's doing well once again if you you're clearly the number one target on your team, but the yards aren't insane. That just tells me the passing offense itself isn't amazing, even if you're really holding your own. Here, Jerry Rice was off to such a good start at Northwestern. I think he's only at 50 yards per game now. They still have this Brendan Sullivan in 89 overall. He's playing weaker competition. I thought Jerry was really going to explode this year. Uh, Desmond Howard at Ohio State, just they're really just feeding. He's just out of the rotation. Next year, you know, both these guys are seniors 
he'll be their clear cut number one receiver. But this year, it's a little behind the eight ball. Go down to Texas. And last time we looked, Jamar was really just not getting much. And yeah, still just not much. But once again, these two guys are both seniors. They're two number one options. It's going to be basically him and Kane. Oh, and Kane's a senior. Oh no, Kane's a junior. So to be basically these two just running the show as receivers next year. So he will get a lot of run. It's just, you know, hasn't been quite at from the start. Same Moose Muhammad's just taking all the all the receptions. So Percy and Tavon are kind of at the back of the line a little bit, but next year they should really explode. Same thing. And then lastly, we're looking at USC and Tim Brown, number one receiver, Crabtree, fourth leading receiver, but Mario Williams is gone next year. So these two should just step in and be their one and two receivers. So I thought we'd see a little bit more from the guys this year, but I think next year it should be smooth sailing, just ready to rock. Okay, I'm going to look through some of these schedules here and see if I can find a good game for us. Yeah, I'm just looking through the schedules and I'm just having a hard time. Like Nebraska's two and seven. If we wanted to watch Julio, I'm having a hard time finding us a good game to watch. So I think I'm just going to have to sim to the conference championship games. And then hopefully there's something around there that we could check out. All right, here we are in conference championship weekend. Let's see. I'm hoping we can find two of our guys matched up. Maybe Bama, Georgia. No, Florida. No, no, no. Okay, so we don't have any of our guys matched up. So yeah, unfortunately, we just haven't had any really good matchups. Usually by year two, I like to watch one, but maybe we'll have one in the bowl game because this one, there's a they're playing in a lot of different conferences. So that has made it a little bit more difficult, but we're going to sim to next week. We're going to go to bowl season and we're going to hopefully have some of our eyes matched up in a bowl game. All right. So there's who won the Heisman, Trey Benson. I think he was the Tennessee running back Air Force. Somehow my Air Force team that I've literally not recruited, done anything is the 14th ranked team in the nation that's interesting okay we're gonna go look at scores and schedules hopefully we have some boys matched up that'd be cool to see so oregon air force boise state georgia southern lsu oklahoma we got usc tcu florida miami we don't have anyone on miami florida state washington a m duke texas georgia so that might be yeah that might be our best bet there so we do have a matchup so actually one of our guys is in the national championship game desmond howard is the third receiver at ohio state but they're not playing any of our guys so this is Georgia, Texas. Jamar is like their third receiver. Calvin Johnson is Georgia's second. So I don't know. We can check it out. We will see. Maybe it'll be close at the end, but maybe we'll at least see these guys on the field a little bit. So this is where their numbers sit. They're pretty similar on offense. Georgia has a much better defense. So here we go. Georgia, Texas, not the natty. Texas looks a little overmatched to me, but we will see if it is close. We'll hop in on the field and get a little look at the end. So 14 nothing after the first quarter, Georgia 21 nothing. So this is looking like a bit of a laugher unless Texas can do something here. Yeah, 28 to seven. Jamar Chase actually just caught a ball. Texas is driving a little bit. I don't even know what number Jamar is. He might be number 80 at the bottom of the screen there with the single sleeve, I think. Ewers drops back. Look for Jamar. Give us Jamar something. Second and five. Oh my goodness. Ewers gets just cracked. Obviously, this game isn't very close, but wanted to hop in and uh, just check one out. We need to see even watch this drive. Maybe Jamar will get some action. Jamar is at the top of the screen there. Number 80, I believe soloed up maybe a little slant fade in the back corner oh, oh jamar actually looked open in the back corner to me right there but he throws it almost picked off fourth and four are they gonna go for it they are give it to jamar here we go jamar at the top of the screen look for jamar look for jamar look for jamar look for jamar he's running cures ewers oh and it's incomplete yeah so that is gonna do it Georgia is going to win this one 12 and one could have definitely had a run at the national final for Georgia there. That is going to be it at this score. I don't think they're going to be throwing to Calvin very much, but there we go. Oh, oh my goodness. Somehow it's 28, 21 and Texas is driving. I didn't think there was a shot, but all of a sudden Ewers has the ball stuck six, but he's going down there with a huge hit. Wow. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Texas just roared back. Okay, hey, we'll watch this drive. Maybe maybe Jamar will do something here. Let's get a little game-winning touchdown pass to Jamar Chase. Top of the screen, soloed up on the left there. 
Ewers drops back, fires it in underneath, only able to pick up about two yards. Going to make it third and eight. 30 seconds left, and Texas is out of timeout. So this is going to have to be a miracle finish. We'll see what Quinn Ewers is able to do right here. Okay, here we go. Jamar is top left there. Um, Ewers will play action, will pump. So go deep, get it, ball out. Oh. Oh, I thought he caught that. He tried to get it. Oh, wow. Okay, big, big breakup by Georgia there. Okay, this is going to be fourth and eight. This is the ball game right here. Go to Jamar. Go to the freak of nature, Jamar. He's a uh, bottom screen receiver. He's actually out of your screen right now. Ewers drops back. Look for Jamar Chase. Oh, and, oh breaks a tackle. Goes over the top should have been picked off there it is okay so it got a little crazy there at the end but georgia is able to take this one they are gonna win it georgia takes home this game i think this was the sugar bowl we'll go look at the stats right here see who had a good game see if jamar or calvin did anything when we were watching so if we look at receiving calvin had two for 20 nothing crazy and then jamar had five for 71 so actually a pretty pretty decent day for jamar second leading receiver on the team okay so that is gonna be it guys we will sim through the last little bit we'll sim through the bowl games we'll see who won the natty we'll look at the final stats for these players we'll look who was all american see if our guys got any of those you know those awards all right okay so ohio state takes it home national champion 14 and oh wow what a season there was a look at all the one loss teams there's five one loss teams and a 14 and oh team that is kind of crazy you don't see that very often crazy okay let's look at the all americans i maybe maybe randy randy definitely could have been an all american i think he's really the only one who would have had a shot not first team or second team so we didn't get any all americans on the squads out of any of our guys look at awards winners i actually don't usually look at awards i don't even know which one is the receiver oh, blitnikoff is the receiver award this is actually a good list to look at wow we didn't get anyone even in the top 10 wow that is kind of crazy so you know our guys are obviously super talented maybe you know they're all sophomores so it's still super early it's not even like their overalls are that crazy the highest one's like a 93 so next year is really going to be the year that that is when we're going to make our money with these boys okay so we're going to look at the final stats for these guys we'll also look at the qbs just to kind of see how their qb did as well so randy 1325 yards 16 touchdowns over 100 per game randy moss absolute freak of nature which we all knew he has tailing green who had a great year 44 touchdowns six interceptions 92 overall and he will be back in boise for one more year to play with with randy so that is great for them okay if we look at clemson aj and larry just decent not not amazing club nick as a junior was okay but he will be back next year so that is good if we go down to florida we have jack miller senior so he will be gone so they will have to get a new qb next year justin blackman good not great year 60 yards per game but was their leading receiver we look at florida state peter work slowed down a little bit there um 990 yards for 70 a game pretty good not incredible they had aj duffy who will oh no sorry they had rod rod maker who will be gone and they will have a sophomore in aj aj duffy who does actually look like he could be pretty decent okay then we go to georgia calvin 500 yards not great um they are gonna have this vandegrift guy back and you know he's a junior and 90 overall he should get a lot better next year i just don't think they're gonna throw the ball enough to be you know super dynamic there but we will see okay then we go down to lsu and we have Devonte 743 five touchdowns 57 a game like decent leading receiver but not great they had this new smire 89 overall as a junior maybe next year he'll he'll make a big step and they could have a good passing game then we're gonna go down to nebraska who just julio took such a big step he had like double the yards last year so the passing game at nebraska as a whole just took a giant leap back they had an 83 overall senior quarterback who just did not play very good julio is kind of in a rough spot unless they have a good young guy this could julio maybe his best year will be as his first year now we've northwestern rice 905 by far the leading re receiver 64 yards a game is pretty good not incredible they do have you know a good junior quarterback who will be back next year though so plenty of time there for jerry ohio state national champion desmond howard 
you know, as a sophomore, 33 yards per game, kind of in your fourth receiving option on the team. Not horrible, but I do believe this is, yeah, this is CJ Stroud's last year. So, but they do have this Kyle McCord 91 overall junior. So, you know, Desmond should should be ready to kind of smash next year if I had to guess. Gonna go to Texas, and we're pretty sure Jamar, you know, yeah, fourth reading receiver, kind of same thing. But by next year, guys, all these guys should be in a great position next year. Quinn Ewers, a junior, so Ewers should be back. AM, they have Wiegman, sophomore, so he should be back for basically these guys' whole career. And this Muhammad guy is leaving, so they're they didn't have a great year, but you know. They're going to be their two number one receiving options next year. They're going to be in a great spot. Then lastly, we have USC. Tim Brown, number one leading receiver, 1,000 yards, 75 a game. You will take that. Crabtree in kind of more of a, you know, just supplemental role. But these two should be their two number one targets next year, both in a great spot. But they are losing the GOAT Caleb Williams, 40 touchdowns this year. And their backup is Miller Moss, who's an 89 junior. So should be actually in a pretty decent spot next year. Okay, so we are going to sim to year three. We're going to look at their overall, see how much they went up. We're going to see what their QBs are looking like. I mean, they're all going to be starters at this point. So we'll see what their kind of target competition is, all of that. All right, so here we are, start of their junior junior year this is the year boys this is where they're all gonna be they should be as long as they have a qb this should be the year everyone is ready to freaking smash so we'll look at receivers first randy moss goes up to a 98 overall so he'll 100 be a 99 by next year the freakiest of freaks six four here's all his stats quickly go through i'll quickly zip through some of the guy's stats maybe not everyone but you guys can take a quick look oh my goodness he was supposed to have his qb back but he bounced he had that six foot six junior guy wow so now he is an 82 overall so all of a sudden randy looked like he was in the best spot possible but now unless that guy comes out and balls that's gonna be tough okay then we have look at their receiving core they have five 90s four guys over 94 with larry and aj a 98 and 97 these guys are the absolute just huge technicians route running catching traffic spec catch these guys really can do it all so wow aj and larry they should have club nick yeah they 97 club nick in for his senior year and then they'll have this hunter johnson guy step in next year so honestly these two guys should smash this year they should smash okay we're going to florida and justin blackman goes to a 96 so didn't quite jump up uh the same as the other guys we'll look at his qb he's got kyle angle um 87 junior and then he's got jalen kitten as the backup so angle that's like decent i don't think it's gonna be you know a smash per se but should be good warwick goes up to 98 his next best receivers are 80s he should be getting the ball 10 times a game 12 times a game he's got duffy who's a junior so he's gonna have duffy for both more years he should do really well there is no re there's nothing stopping peter ward from getting 1500 yards this year okay we go to georgia and calvin is by far their number one target gotta remember they also had uh what's his name the really good tight end who's coming up this year he is gone so you know calvin is by far locked in number one they have okay so he's gonna have a really good QB both years too. He's got a 96 senior and a 92 junior quarterback. The only thing is they just don't pass the ball enough. He's 6'5", 95 speed. Can look at his stats really quick. Obviously a freak show. Hopefully does really well. Gonna go down to LSU. We got Devontae Smith. It goes up to a 97 overall. We'll look at his QB. 93, a senior. So, and oh god, their backup's a senior as well. So, the, this is gonna have to be, I don't think next year is going to be great for Devonte. this year needs to be Devonte's freaking year you go up and put up some big stats young man okay we go to nebraska and um unless they got a huge jump in qb play so julio goes up to a 97 next closest is an 80s you know should absolutely just dominate the touches but he is an 84 sophomore quarterback so at least this guy's not gone next year but uh yeah not not great for our man julio
probably okay. We're going to go to Northwestern. So Sullivan is back for his senior year, and then they're going to have this Lausch guy for, for Jerry Rice's last year. But at least for this year, Rice is going to be in a really good spot. Clear cut number one receiver. Only went up to a 96, so didn't quite progress as much as some of the other guys, but still should be good. Then we go to Ohio State, and Desmond Howard is their clear cut number one option on offense, or at least receiving. I think they had a decent tight end. Yeah, they have a decent tight end, but should get the majority of the touches and he is Devin Brown junior quarterback should be there for both years defending national champions Desmond is in a great great spot okay we're gonna go to Jamar Chase at Texas he hasn't had a great two years but he should be their number one option by far he is 97 overall some other good options as well but clear cut the most talented one on the team um we'll look at his QBs he should have Ewers back so he's gonna have Ewers back for his senior year card Okay, and then next year, he'll have Malik Murphy as a senior. So Jamar should have a really, really strong last two years, which, you know, we definitely want to see. And we go down to Texas A&M. We have a pair of 97 overall absolute speedsters for A&M. We have got to get in a game and watch with them at least once. Weigman only went up to an 89, but he is going to be there unless he transfers or leaves for the NFL. Um for the next two years so good maybe not great elite quarterback play but should be really good then lastly we're going to end off at sc and we have tim brown michael crabtree hudson just behind them so four great receivers crabtree and tim brown should be their two number one options get the ball a ton who's their qb we have miller moss 93 overall should be good this year but then next year it'll probably be this nathan johnson guy or maybe this ray Rowell. so these guys got to make hay this year because they could be basically QB lists next year. But they have Relic Brown also, so they have a really talented team. So that is where we sit going into year number three, guys. This is the year. We're definitely going to get into at least one game. I want to find an AM game. I really want to see Percy Harvin and Tavon Austin on the same field together. So definitely going to do that. But yeah, so we're going to sim to about week five, week six. All right, so here we go. We just simmed through three weeks. We could look at a quick look at the top 25, see how, if any of our schools are off to a really good start. So Georgia, 5-0. So that's obviously a great start. Their second, wow, Syracuse, okay, way up there. You don't see that very often. Ohio State, defending national champions, a really good start with our boy Desmond Howard, Jamar Chase, and the Texas Longhorns five and zero. Oh. So, and then USC four and one with Crabtree and Tim Brown. So we have you know some guys, two guys on that team. So we definitely have guys sprinkled all throughout the top twenty five. Like I've been saying, this really is the year these guys should start to blow up as long as they have qb play it's basically gangbusters so starting off with our guy randy moss i don't know how many games he's played 81 yards per game so i i think he's just really gonna take a step back with this quarterback he went from a low 90s mid 90s quarterback to an 82 so 80 yards per game is still good but randy moss might be just the most physically imposing receiver ever so you know what no matter what he is gonna put up some numbers but maybe not quite what he would have before then if we go to clemson we have their leading receivers are larry fitz and aj green they just don't throw the football both over 50 a game so you know like they're both gonna make a ton of plays they're gonna be the main two weapons in the offense over the next two years it's just they, like they have a great quarterback 97 overall quarterback and they just they don't throw the ball so that's a little disappointing for our two clemson guys and club has gone after this year as well so next year they're gonna take a bit of a step back quarterback play wise okay we go to florida oh my goodness this knee black is way out gaining our man justin blackman by a ton like doubling him up in yards per game so blackman is if he keeps this up he's gonna end up being the most disappointing out of all the receivers because that's like not even the quarterback right? oh i guess that's the tight end so this guy just really likes throwing to his tight end this uh qb then we have peter work by far their number one option more than doubling up their neck so if you're putting up that yeah 113 yards per game you're putting up that type type of production he's just an absolute smash let's see oh they get not really any carries but uh yeah and he's still gonna have this aj duffy next year so there is no reason over the next two years peter work isn't one of the absolute superstars and wow calvin johnson finally is showing what he is 121 yards per game six touchdowns this is what we wanted to see wow there we go they have brock 
at, oh my god, he's got a 230 QB rating, 17 touchdowns, zero picks. They're undefeated. So this is Calvin's year. He's the by far number one option. He has a good QB for one more year at least. So this is like, finally we get to see the real Calvin. Okay, we're going down to LSU and our boy Devontae. I, yeah, I just, they're spreading the wealth actually quite a bit. He is their number one receiver, but just not getting the crazy target share, crazy amount of run. 313 yards, 50 yards per game is okay, but nothing right home about. Okay, we're going to go down to Nebraska and our boy Julio. Oh my goodness. This might be the most stark difference out of anybody. So 319 yards. The next closest player doesn't have over 75. Only one touch on. He's averaging 79 per yards per game. No one else is averaging 20. So he just doesn't have a good QB. But when the QB throws, he's like, hey, well, I have Julio Jones and literally no one else. So I'm going to give you the ball. So, I mean, 80 yards per game, all things considered with how bad his QB is, you, you have to take that if you're Julio Jones. Okay, going down to Northwest. And Jerry's been a little disappointing, but uh, is this Cal Calvin Johnson the second? Okay, I don't know. There we go. Maybe Calvin Johnson has a son at Northwestern. I think Calvin's only like 32, so I doubt it, but um, maybe. Um, okay, we have Jerry Rice. Yeah, 30 receptions, 460 yards, 92 a game. You will take that. So he started out amazing the first half of his freshman year. Then the second half of his freshman year and his sophomore year, he was just okay. But now he is starting to really, really play well. Okay, Ohio State. I'm really interested for this. So they lost a ton of receiving talent last year and CJ Stroud. But they had some really good other quarterbacks and Desmond Howard is their by far number one option. So still, you know, outgaining everyone by a good amount. I think they've only, yeah, they've only played four games. So 93 yards per game for Desmond Howard. You will absolutely take that. He's got a good quarterback in this Devin Brown. Yeah, nine touchdowns, 187 QB rating. So Desmond Howard is in a really good spot to, you know, put up some great stats rest of the year. Okay, going down to Texas. And once again, this is the first year things are really opening up for Jamar. So it'll be very interesting to see what he's doing. 296, not the leading receiver. That's the tight end. He's got 10 touchdowns somehow. That's crazy. So, I mean, 10 touchdowns, you got it, and 60 yards per game. It's only, you know, four games in, so I'm not going to freak out, but I was hoping for a good four, 450 yards in that time frame. Okay, Texas A&M, Evan Stewart is outgaining both of them, and Tavon Austin has got 130 yards. I don't get that. I mean, Percy, 19 yards per touch. He's killing it 81 yards per game but somehow this evan stewart is just getting all the run and Tavon is just riding the pine so i don't know how they're both 97s they're both going to be above stewart on the depth chart so i don't really get that okay now we're looking at sc tim brown 654 yards and crabtree somehow they're i guess this these two are very close overall wise but 260 for crabtree but 10 touchdowns for tim brown too so Tim Brown, 130 yards per game. That might be the most. Hey, I don't think anyone else had 130. So, and he's got 10 touchdowns. So Tim Brown at USC is just absolutely smashing. Uh, he's got this Miller Moss guy, good quarterback, 19 touchdowns. 186 QBR. I mean, you will take that. So that is where all our guys sit right now. Um, you know, pretty interesting. I'm going to look through the scores and schedules. I definitely want to find a game this year. It's tough because everybody's in different conferences and stuff, but I'm going to go through and try to find us something. Okay, this might be the best I can do. I've looked through all these schedules. I see nothing. We have Florida State playing Clemson. And like, that's maybe week 11 in November. So I think I'm just going to sim to that. And that's going to have to be the game. Not amazing teams, but at least see some of our boys. And then we'll try to get in a bowl game as well. All right. So we have six and two Clemson, four and four Florida State. It is a rivalry game. We're going to have three of our receivers in here. So we're going to take a quick look at this. Then we'll, we'll sim to the next week. We'll look kind of at the stats, see where everyone's sitting. Let's look at the top 25. So that's where they're, all their stats sit. So good both good not great teams it definitely doesn't look like peter work is their number one player absolute stud they got club nick larry fitzgerald and aj green but they don't throw the football yeah we'll sim through the first you know two quarters see where we're sitting wow no scoring through quarter one nodded at zero okay definitely more fireworks there 24 14 lead for clemson we're gonna go to the fourth quarter here ah 31 14 yeah not 
not looking like uh florida state's gonna be able to make a game out of this yeah 34 14 we're gonna be at the end of the game but we'll look at their stats see if any of our receivers put up some big numbers so duffy like this florida state qb plays really well uh peter work five for 105 absolute stud for florida state look at clemson larry fitz had a good game aj did basically nothing but yeah they just they don't throw the ball at clemson they have two six foot three six foot four absolute condors top five picks in the nfl draft and they don't throw the rock and they have a 97 qb so i don't freaking know okay we're just gonna sim to the next week and then we'll look at all the stats and stuff Okay, look at the top 25. Penn State undefeated 9-0. Bama undefeated 9-0. Northern Illinois undefeated 9-0. Then we have our boys at SC. So that's our highest ranked team right now. So yeah, some of our guys have fallen out of the top 10 a little bit. Uh, Ohio State, Texas, Georgia. So they actually all just have one loss. They're all kind of still in the running there. Four teams in the top 10 there that all have a shot and then we don't really have anyone else texas a&m at 23 okay so those are our four those are our four big guys still left in the running sc ohio state texas oh is that only three? Oh, and georgia and georgia so yeah all those guys are still in the running they're all in different yeah they're all in different conferences so like we can't see any of them in a conference championship game or anything not the best but okay let's look at the qbs so miller moss at sc putting up gaudy stats in the lead for the Heisman Trophy. Okay, let's go look at our stats again. Look at our boys. We'll look at it kind of through a little bit quicker just because we're going to do it at the end of the year as well. Looking at our boy Randy, 8-13, 7 touchdowns, 90 a game. We will take that. All things considered, Randy is doing work at Boise. Go down to Clemson. I'm not imagining these two are doing anything special, unfortunately. Larry Fitz is, is doing good. AJ's doing just okay. 40 yards a game and 60 yards a game. So nine touchdowns for Larry you'll take. But yeah, just overall very disappointing with those two situation. Uh, we go to Florida and Blackman is just barely outgaining Kevin Johnson, who's an 83 overall, and getting his shit caved in by knee black who's a freaking tight end. I mean, he's a 92. He's a good player, but 43 yards a game. Once again, he does have 10 touchdowns, but just not happy with that. Peter Warwick, the G, 17 yards a touch, 96 a game, six touchdowns, more than doubling up any other player on the team. Absolute smash. We go to Georgia. A thou I was worried about Calvin coming into this year. I just said they're not going to throw the ball enough, but he is their weapon. He's tripling up everyone else. Uh, if they, He's averaging 17.7 .7 yards per catch. 11 touchdowns 116 yards per game this is what we wanted to see from calvin johnson and we are finally getting to see it okay lsu and we have our boy Devonte, by far leading receiver but 50 yards per game they just don't throw they don't have a great offense unfortunate go back down to julio at nebraska and last time we checked on him he was out gaining everyone else on the team by like double triple as receivers okay so he actually has guys catching up to him a tiny bit he's not so far out ahead like i think he had like 340 yards and the next close had like 74 or something so not white doing that so more than doubling up everyone else but just didn't go to the right school unfortunately so it is what it is okay we'll go to jerry rice at northwestern okay jerry putting in work 109 a game nine touchdowns 988 very good okay ohio state desmond i honestly was thought this year would be a little better for desmond 20.8 like Every time he touches the ball, he's a smash. 75 yards is good, but I, I I thought he could be around 100. Okay, then we have Texas and Jamar. Not last time we checked, wasn't jumping off the page and still getting out game by a tight end. 13 touchdowns is good. Be the 10 in the first four games. 67 yards per game is okay, but not what I was expecting or hoping for. Now, once again, Evan Stewart out gaining Percy Harvin and Tavon. Tavon, okay. So Tavon at least has started to creep back up. He was getting absolutely shit pumped by these two, but uh, he's at least in their range now. They have three good receivers all getting around 65 to 70 yards a game, which is good, but uh, yeah, not, not, as, not what I was hoping from those two. Then lastly, we have USC. We got Tim Brown, absolute smash. 16 touchdowns, 108 per game. Unfortunately, this Kyron Hudson is outgaining Michael Crabtree, but 
still is your third receiver. He's doing well. And I know they're QB. This is the guy who's leading the lead or leading the Heisman race right now. 3,300 yards, 36 touchdowns, you know, four, 330 a game. He's got some really good weapons. USC is going to be in the running for this thing. So we have four teams that still, like I said, have a shot at the natty. We're going to sim to conference championship weekend. So see where everything sits. All right. So conference championship weekend. Let's look at the top 25 quick. Penn State and Northern Illinois undefeated. It sucks because I'll put these non-Power 5 teams in the natty in this. So unless Northern Illinois loses um, in their conference championship game, even if they even have one, then it's probably going to be those two in the final. Then we have our SC team just on the outside looking in with one loss. Georgia, one loss just on the outside looking in. Oh, we had two other teams. Who were they? LSU, Ohio State ended up losing. Northwestern, Florida, Baylor. But I wonder. So Penn State is probably going to be playing Ohio State in the conference championship game. It might be worth checking that out. So we got Oregon. Oh, no. Northwestern is playing them. Oh, so that's Jerry Rice, actually. I forgot. I, I forget about Jerry when I'm looking at the schedules. 3-4. That's actually pretty good. Maybe watch USC, Oregon. Boise, Georgia, Bama. Okay, there's, there's some good games here. Uh, you know what? Maybe watch Georgia, Bama. I, I want to see Calvin Johnson in action. I want to see this six foot five behemoth put in work on this Bama secondary. Both teams, 99s across the board. Yeah, let's check this out. So this is where they sat very very close teams honestly both really good offensively really good defensively they got calvin walker and stockton they have law campbell and bonds they have a really good receiver actually too all right let's see it sec championship game gonna sim through the first quarter here three nothing bama so low scoring 13 7 alabama at halftime so 20 to 10 bama and i think bama's driving okay so georgia's got the ball back we'll go next change of possession okay they got it inside the five yard line we'll watch this play go to calvin johnson I th is he number 81 he must be that guy's freaking huge they're running the ball. Oh, oh, he's stuffed. He looked like he could have put that just right up downhill. Go to Calvin Johnson. Red zone. Go to your six foot five, four three running, you know, absolute freak show. Is he on the field even now? They're in goal line. No, no Calvin Johnson out there. They got another alignment out there. They're really gonna try to run this football. Little lead, yeah, little lead up the middle. Robinson scores. We got ourselves a ball game in the SEC championship. But Alabama goes right down and scores. So we're going to watch this drive. They're stuck 10. Probably not going to happen, but they're going to have to throw the ball. This is going to be a good chance to get Calvin Johnson involved. Looks like he's at the top of the screen there. Go to your number one option. Nope, you're going to check it down to a running back for zero yards. That's all right, though. We don't want to see Calvin Johnson go for 80 right now. Why would why, why would we want to see that, you know? Okay, Calvin Johnson, bottom your screen. See what happens. Drops back, bit of pressure off to his tight end. Oh my goodness, that's a huge stick for the Bama secondary, but big pickup for Georgia, but it is not looking good for them right now. Go to Calvin. Calvin Johnson, bottom of your screen. Him and Randy Moss, two most physical freaky freaks of all time, and he's not getting the ball. Go to it down to his running back. They're doing a ton of hurry up here. Hurry up and give Calvin Johnson the rock. How about that? Okay, under center, drop back. Pushing it underneath and dropped by his running back. Okay, here we go. Under center once again. I think Calvin's out of the screen here on the bottom. Let's see if he looks to him. Go to Calvin. No. Push. Wow. Wide open down the field though. Big gainer. Like, does he know he has Calvin Johnson? Come on. Okay, bottom of your screen. Just you can see the top of his helmet right there. Oh, uh, let's see. Drops back. Scanning underneath. Oh, he kind of put a little too much air under that. That actually probably would have been a touchdown for Van de Graaff. Not hurrying to the line there. Okay. You're stuck 10. You need to score quick, boys. Um, Doesn't look like they have any Calvin Johnson out there, actually. Wow. Gonna run the ball. And he is stuffed. Third in inches. I do not know about that play call. You have a minute 15. You do have three timeouts, but you need to score and score quick. Can't have the clock running down. Okay, we have Calvin singled up at the top of the screen. Give him a little fade. Come on. 
Slant, 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 slant. No, we went to another guy, but they did score. Okay. So Calvin just didn't get the work there. He was in the area, but he decided to go to the other guy. There we go. We'll go next change of possession here. Onside kick recovered by Bama. Yeah, they just run it out. So there it is. Bama wins the SEC championship game. We'll look and see if Calvin put up any big stats there. Calvin went for six for 90. So they really were going to bell today, but... You know, Calvin had a decent game. Not, we didn't really get to see much of it, but that is okay. All righty. So now we're going to sim through the rest of conference championship weekend. We'll see the bowl games. Hopefully two of our teams are in the bowl game or hopefully one of them made the national final. Um, could be USC, could be Ohio State possibly. So we will see. So there it is. The Heisman Trophy goes to Northern Illinois. Wow. He was the cute. Like, I think Northern Illinois was the team that was 12 and 0. They might be in the national final. So that does make some sense. And yeah, they are. They're playing Penn State in the national final. So, okay. We need some guys playing in a bowl game. Come on. Boise State, Arizona. Who do we got? Who do we got? Northwestern, Baylor. Good year for Northwestern. Clemson, West Virginia. Texas A&M, Iowa State. Texas, Oregon. That's just a good game overall, but not our guys. Or not both of our guys. We have one of our guys in there. LSU, North Carolina State. USC, Georgia. Okay, that's the game we're watching. That's sick. So we're going to see Calvin Johnson versus Tim Brown and Michael Crabtree. Florida versus Duke. Washington, Ohio State. That's another good game, but we only have guys in one. Alabama, Oklahoma, not us. Yeah, so there it is. We're watching Georgia, USC in the Rose Bowl. You know what? It's not the national final, but we got seven versus three. Three of our receivers in it. Going to check this game out. Hopefully it's close at the end. Get to see some of these guys put in some work and then and yeah, then we'll sim through the rest of the Bulls and we will see all the guys' final stats in their junior year. This is where they sit. So USC has one of the best offenses in the country, second in points per game. Georgia's a little bit better defensively, but a little worse offensively. So should be an absolute just barn burner of a game. They have Crabtree and Tim Brown leading the way. They have Calvin freaking Johnson. I, I, I bet you any Georgia fan watching this video is like, why could Calvin Johnson not come to Georgia in real life instead of Georgia Tech? So here's a little bit of, you know, make up for it. Alrighty, so we'll let's go to the end of this quarter, see where we sit. 7-3 Georgia after one. Wow, really good second quarter there. 24-21 SC. So we got an absolute barn burner here. 24-31 Georgia, or USC, sorry, and Georgia is driving. Okay, they're inside the one. Oh, no, USC got the ball back. Okay, so now USC's driving. They're just running the rock. Does not look like they're going to pass the ball. Okay, so Georgia is going to get the ball back right here, and we're going to watch this. So they have 350 to go 80 yards to try to tie this game up. Go to Calvin Johnson. We want to see the 6'5 freak get some run. Tie this game up, and then I want to see Tim Brown and Crabtree try to drive down. They do a little sprint out, and that was not it. I'm just going to say that. That was not what we were after. Okay, so trips to the bottom of your screen. Calvin Johnson, number 81 at the very bottom, and they're going to run the ball. I mean, you do have time to run it. Uh, you don't have to just throw it. So I actually don't hate that third and inches again, you know, nine, almost 10 yards on the play. So it's actually a pretty good play call. Okay, third and inches. Don't mess around. Get this first down and keep rocking. Calvin at the top of our screen here. A little handoff, Ooh, a little counter, and they get two guys to run into each other. That could have been, those counters can be a loss a ton of the time, but they are able to get that through. There we go. Okay, now start passing. Where do we got Calvin? We got Calvin split out wide, top of your screen. Big number 81 for the Georgia Bulldogs, and they're running the football again. Okay, and the linebacker comes down and sticks them. You don't have that much time. Th running the ball a little bit here and there, Georgia, I don't hate, but not three in a row. Okay, Calvin up top once again. Split out wide. Corner up pressed. Oh, do they get him to come offside or was that a false start? False start. Okay, so Georgia back to back. Not great plays here. Let's start putting in some work, boys. Calvin, top your screen. Soloed up. He looks like he's looking his way. He has a ton of time. All the time in the world and he throws it for a yard. Oh my goodness. Georgia is falling apart a little bit here. I think this is like, I don't know why. Sometimes the first down, third down marker goes away. I believe this is third and nine. Calvin at the top of the screen. Nothing. Oh my God. And the running back dropped it. Oh, wow. He actually had a, he could have got a first down there. If not, he's going to be about a yard short. So I think it's about fourth and nine right now. And they're punting the football. Wow. That is shocking. I guess, I guess, yes, maybe. Yeah. 218. 
three Timmy's. I wouldn't have done it, but wow. Okay. I, I would watch USC, but I, I, they're just going to run the ball. We're not going to really get to see Crabtree and Tim. I mean, we'll, we'll watch one play just so we can actually see them on the field. But uh, I don't even remember maybe 80 and I don't even know what numbers they are, honestly. But yeah, they're just going to run the ball. They have Relique Brown, good, fast running back back there. Watch one more. I'd have, I'd have to look at their numbers or if they obviously... I think they're 80 and 86. Motion cross. This is just going to be a run again, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, no, they're passing. Not to our guys, though. Of course. There we go. I mean, it's third down. Maybe they'll pass. Let's watch it. I think Tim Brown's 80 and Crabtree's 82. They're the two wideouts on top and bottom of your screen. Motion their tight end across the field straight drop oh they're going screen screen to relieve and he's stuffed okay so georgia is gonna get the ball back no timeouts but they're gonna have two minutes to drive down try to score so we're gonna sim this play yeah here we go so they have to go you know 85 yards in a in two minutes with no timeouts but they got a shot drops back ton of time basically throws it backwards to their running back and they gain one yard so i don't know what the fucking georgia qb is up to he is making some weird decisions back there but uh all right I'm like are they gonna spike it they're spiking it they threw it for a yard and spiked it so they just lost <laughs> they just lost 30 seconds and now it's third and nine so yeah george has been interesting late game here so third and nine calvin bottom of your screen let's see what he does straight drop calvin's on this little sit route he throws oh a deep corner route out of bounds finally van griff does something back there for georgia there we go hey calvin's at the top of the screen here split out wide van de griff drops back fires it oh another corner route another corner route along the sideline back to back 20 yard ish gains all of a sudden georgia's driving it looked like they were dead in the water inside their own 20 yard line and then just hit back to back for like 40 yards altogether so they will take that okay here it is straight drop once again a ton of time but he holds it too long that guy was on the ground was able to get up and sack him wow vandegrift held that ball a long time are they gonna spike this ball now yeah so now it's about to be third and 20 <laughs> Georgia just shooting himself in the foot. Every time they have, they seem like they have some momentum. They seem like they have something going. They don't. So, all right. So here it is. Is like third and 15, whatever. I don't know why. Sometimes the third down marker, like I said, just goes away, which is kind of weird. But yeah, here it is. Van de Griff drops back. Screen pass. Oh, a little bit of room. Not really, though. Okay. So fourth down. This is the game right here. It's not even looked calvin johnson's way his six foot five 1300 yard brigand behemoth hasn't looked at him he soloed up on the bottom of the screen if you're gonna go to him now is the time he is not he hits the out route and it is knocked down and that is it usc is gonna take down the georgia bulldogs georgia had a few gains at the end there but uh yeah just not enough not enough two big plays but that is it yeah we're gonna look at our three guys stats see if they did anything all right let's see receiving calvin seven for 91 oh that's we got i want to look at awards to all americans we're going to look at all that right now so 791 take that tim brown no sorry hudson had a good game crabtree and tim brown just were okay all righty okay so we're going to sim through the rest of the bulls then we're going to look at all americans we're going to look at who won the blitnikoff we're going to look at final stats on the year get into all that all right so let's look at the final all americans let's see if we had any first or second teams we did tim brown first team all american for usc and if we go second team we had calvin johnson so those two were the best this year out of all our quarterbacks both had played really well both in good spots i want to see who won the blitnikoff maybe one of them did for sure look at blitnikoff and calvin johnson wins the blitnikoff tim brown finishes second uh let's see if any of our other guys were on the list that is kind of it so those two were clear cut one and two 
out of the sim for that season. Okay, let's go look at the final stats for all these boys. So there's one thing to keep in mind too, guys. Now all our players are juniors. So it doesn't usually happen when I do these sims, but one, one or a few of them could leave now as well. So that is the thing. Maybe Randy Moss will declare for the draft. I, it doesn't honestly happen as much as I thought it would. So usually they all come back, but it's definitely possible one of these guys will leave. So after next year as well, we can actually see when they all leave. We can see what round they were drafted in so we'll see if they're a first rounder second rounder third rounder undrafted whatever we're also going to look at their career stats and just see who had the best career overall over the four seasons so randy moss 11 14 12 touchdowns 81 yards per game we will take that for where he is it's about as good as we could expect with that qb play these two are just disappointing 795 is okay 407 is just not good 13 touchdowns for larry is nice like you got cade club nick a 97 overall and they just don't throw the ball i I don't know. They just don't throw it. Florida. Yeah. Blackman, same thing. I don't know. Like as this 96, like 13 touchdowns. It's okay. Just not great. Florida State. Peter Work. He's another guy who could have been like an All-American this year. 102 per game. 1,200 yards. Nine touchdowns. By far number one weapon. We already see Calvin. Won the Bolitnikoff. Second team All-American. 18 touchdowns. 105 a game. Absolute freak. Tripling up basically the next closest player on his team. We got to see a great Calvin. Calvin Johnson year this year. So I'm just glad about that. Even if he, I think he loses his QB next year. Devontae Smith under 700 yards. You know, they just, they, they don't have it. They have a good quarterback, but I mean, he doesn't play that well. 130 QBR. They must just run the ball a ton. Yeah. Like they just run the ball and don't give it to Devontae Smith. Okay. Going down to Nebraska and we got Julio 721, you know, 60 yards per game. Oh, this is all QB and system there, which is just unfortunate. Go down to North Western Jerry Rice almost 1600 yards 14 touchdowns 111 a game and he lost his QB oh no this is his last year with Sullivan right so he's losing his senior quarterback who they've played together for three years so we could we should expect a pretty big drop down for Rice next year unfortunately and we have Desmond Howard who did crack a thousand yards 18.8 yards per touch 79 per game I am not mad at that from Desmond at all number one receiver Texas these Texas schools have been a disappointment appointment in this sim. Okay. Jamar had a really good second half to the year. That's what I like to see. So 1100 yards, 19 touchdowns, 85 per game. I take it back, Jamar. Good job. I think, yeah, that was Quinn Ewers last year. But I think they have a pretty good third string that Malik Murphy, I think is like a 90. So he'll be back. So Jamar should be in a good spot next year. These two, once again, oh my God. So Tavon started the year awful. He had a pretty big bounce back, honestly, but he kind of, yeah. Evan Stewart's gone next year. It's just these two. They're both going to be 99s overall. That's what I got to remember. I really want to see a, a cave on Austin Percy Harbin game next year, but uh, we will see. Then we go to USC. The man, the myth, the legend, Tim Brown, been an absolute free Crabtree, third leading receiver. This Hudson guy kind of out touched him, but uh, he'll be gone next year. So it should be a uh, full steam ahead for our boy, Michael Crabtree. Okay. So like I said, guys, some guys could leave. So I'm going to sim through this. We're going to go in. We're going to see maybe some guys will leave. We're going to see where everyone's QBs sit. We're going to see they should all be 99s or maybe one or two 98s by next year. So we're going to check all that out as well. All right. So here we are. We start a year four. We're going to look at the rosters. We're going to see where, I mean, most of them should be 99s, but we're going to see where, where they ended up, their final overalls. We're going to see what their QBs are looking like. So yeah, Randy Moss, 99. Freak shows of all freak shows. There's his stats. Spec catch, catching, jumping. You know, basically just needs his catch and traffic and route running to be a little higher. And he's a perfect wide receiver. UB, he's got Maddox Madsen. You know what? Senior year, little guy, but uh, should be able to sling the rock enough to get boy, you know, him rocking at Boise with Randy. Okay, we go down to Clemson. Both should be 99. Yeah, they got Larry and AJ. Klebnik is gone, but they have this Hunter Johnson. Maybe they'll throw the ball more with Hunter. Maybe Klebnik had a good overall, but they didn't like him throwing the ball. I don't know. We got Florida and Justin Blackman left. So we did have someone leave, which honestly, I, I don't even know if any of my guys have ever left in the other Sims, but there we go. So Justin Blackman gone to the NFL. Florida State, we got Peter Warwick back. 
And what's his QB looking like? Duffy, AJ Duffy, 95 overall senior. These two should be an absolute smash this year. Okay, we go down to George and Calvin left. Oh man, we lost some guys and he had Gunner Stockton back. That's unfortunate. I don't think any of my, one of the running back one I just did. I don't think any running backs left. That is unfortunate. Calvin, see you later. Damn, I mean, he had such a good freaking year last year. We got to see one amazing Calvin here. Okay, Devontae Smith is still back. They actually have some really good receivers, but they have no quarterback. They're starting a true freshman. Oh God, Devontae is going to be in for a long year. Okay, go down to Nebraska. Julio is back. I probably would have left out as Julio. And honestly, this David Thompson, decent, 90 overall come on just feed julio we go to jerry rice at northwestern he is back but he did lose his star quarterback and he's got this jack Lausch back instead so jerry might have taken a pretty big step back but we will see okay we got desmond howard at ohio state and he is back they have a ton of good receivers but their quarterback is gone they're studying a sophomore richard morris so unfortunately might be a little bit of a step back for our boy desmond howard we go down to jamar chase at texas okay so they got you know 390 receivers you got a really good you know second receiver and save on red um and qb yes yeah. so they do have malik murphy at 95 overall nothing wrong with that these two should be a smash okay a m they got 299 receivers percy cave on austin 98 speed 96 speed excel break tackle elusiveness they got it all then qb wiegman senior quarterback 93 overall there is no reason these guys shouldn't put up really really good numbers okay Go to USC. Come on, Tim Brown. Stay, stay. Yes. Yeah. So we got Crabtree and Tim Brown both back for their senior season. So we only ended up losing two guys to the NFL. So that's fine. And they got Nathan Johnson, a redshirt freshman. So this is the first year they haven't had like elite quarterback play at SC. So might see a little bit of a step back, but there we go. Okay, I want to see freshman All-Americans. We'll look at top 25 actually as well. Preseason pool. So SC looks like they're now, oh no, number two. So how many top 10 teams do we have with George? Uh, we don't have george anymore calvin's gone sad face um ohio state lsu floor oh no blackman's gone so no florida northwestern or no that was northern i thought i said no that was northern illinois texas and texas a&m oh there's northwestern so lots of guys in the top 25 let's look at preseason all americans for wide receivers we've got tim brown and jamar chase first team second team jerry rice and trayvon rudolph who is not our guy so we have three of the four you know freshman all americans we're gonna sim to week you know five six here and we'll see where everyone's sitting all right here we are in week six let's look at the top 25 really quick see if our any of our guys are undefeated around there so ohio state number one team in the country no georgia a and m okay a and m that's what we like to see texas three and one so those are our only undefeated teams sc is two losses damn sc um yeah let's look at the stats here Boise and Randy, 627, nine touchdowns, 125 a game. Randy freaking Moss. Go to Clemson, 407 and 208. 407 is actually good. Okay, so Larry's actually having a good year. Finally, one of them is. Um, 52 a game obviously isn't great for AJ. Larry's just been the better player over their careers here, but uh, there we go. Okay, Florida, our guy Blackman is gone to the draft. Florida State, ooh, Warwick work work not quite the stats i did you know because his qb is back he is duffy right yeah duffy's still here so this is weird i was expecting fireworks show for work his last year at florida state just okay so far we're skipping georgia they are gone okay we go down to lsu our boy Devonte 214 42 yards per game someone needs to fire their offensive coordinator i don't know they need to do something they have Devonte smith and he's doing absolutely nothing okay nebraska julio uh 451 90 yards per game hey they have a young qb they have chase androff good tight end and julio jones he's basically throwing it to those two and their tight end is averaging 20 yards per reception which is absolutely batshit for a tight end but there we go ohio state oh 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 that is not what we like to see from desmond howard 37 yards a game is this yeah they, they don't have a great qb so he's a super young guy they must be really just relying on the run yeah like this dalen hayden yeah they're averaging over 200 rushing yards per game so unfortunately for desmond howard in his last season they are going to be a super run heavy team um we go to northwestern 
Oh, I skipped Northwestern. There we go. Uh, Jay Rice, 408, preseason All-American, 102 yards per game. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And he, oh, he did lose his QB. So he's he's fighting through the QB loss, which I respect. Okay, Jamar Chase, preseason first team All-American for Texas. And he's the second leading receiver. Okay, 54 yards per game. Okay, that's just... I don't even want to talk about that. That that I don't like. What is going on at AM? It's oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How is this guy? I mean, Percy is doing a ton. He, Percy's averaging 28 yards per reception. 28. I've never even seen that. Just not getting the rock, but he's averaging 96 yards per game. Tavon's only at 54. I just don't get why they always have one receiver who they like. Oh, we still got to look at the USC guys who they like better than than our main guys there. Disappointing. Go to SC. This this is their QB. So huge step back. Yeah. So Crabtree. So Tim Brown absolutely falling off a map. The Crabtree is having a great year. 120 yards per game. So, you know, he's really kind of taken over the mantle in their senior season. But, you know, Tim Brown kind of was leading the charge for the first three. So Crabtree wants to have one just breakout campaign before they go to the NFL. I think we will allow that. Um, okay. Sim to around week 10 and see if I can find us a game to check out. Okay, we're in week 10 now. Let's look at our top 10 oh, florida okay so florida state's undefeated i actually think i missed them and texas one loss a m one loss okay okay i like that i like that so we have some guys in the running florida state right there i don't think overall wise they're only in 93 i i don't think they're gonna have the legs to carry them that far but good to see so far okay i'm gonna look actually i'm gonna look at the, their, those guys schedule see i don't think we're just gonna have any really good matchups here until hopefully maybe some bowl games oh we just missed out on florida state clemson which actually could have been decent all right yeah i i looked through the schedules there's just really not much we're just gonna simulate to the conference championship maybe we'll have a good match up there if not we'll go to bowl season and hopefully we get another guys you know two guys in the bowl games all right conference championship weekend let's look at the top 25 bama one vortex so those are the only two undefeated teams looks like they'll be in the natty unless vortex loses in a championship game um ohio state 11 and one so if vortex loses maybe they'll get a shot georgia but we don't care about georgia anymore a and m two losses florida state two losses so ohio state is kind of our team right now if we're gonna have one make it if we're gonna have one in in the running that is gonna be them uh georgia bama florida state va tech so we need florida state to beat virginia tech to knock them out and we need ohio state to win in the big 10 championship you know what so we're just gonna sim through this I, yeah i don't know these matchups just aren't doing it for me we're just gonna sim to bowl season here made this fourth season a little shorter i don't want this video my videos have been going pretty long lately so try to make this one a little i just talk a lot so try to make it a little bit shorter but definitely hop in one of these bowl games then we'll look at their final stats for the season we're also going to look at their career stats and we're going to look at um where they get drafted in the nfl so okay so sanders trey sanders at bama wins the heisman 47 touchdowns wow we never had anyone receivers don't really win the heisman especially in these sims so never really thought that would happen Ors and schedules come on give me a good bowl game give me a good bowl game boise state ucla one loss boise state wow randy moss put him work for them ohio state ended up losing two losses clemson michigan state northwestern but seven and five texas tech usc finished six and six wow fall from grace from them ba tech a m florida state ucf bama texas michigan georgia miami wow so friggin calvin could have been in the natty this year but okay i actually i've said though all along I wanted to watch an AM game. Where were they? They're playing Vaughn Tech, who's a good team. So we're just going to check out, check out this game. Then we'll sim through their ass. Wow. So AM was actually the number one scoring team in the nation 48, 48 points per game. Wow. Their punter is their top player, though. So neither, neither Davon Dawson or Percy Arvin, apparently. But okay, here we go. Oh, wow. These guys are very similar color scheme. I didn't even think of that. Basically, just a little bit of that kind of orangey color for Vaughn Tech. So, all right. Let's sim through this quarter see where we sit seven seven but sc is driving yeah so or sorry a and m so a and m up seven a and m up 28 14 it does not look oh, i didn't even mean to watch this it does not look like uh Vautech can stop this a and m offense and they're starting with the football 
Um, let's see who's this. That's actually one thing I want to look at for their career stats to his return yardage. I want to see if any of them were big time returners. So there's Taven Austin. So he is their returner. Okay. So we're going to sim to that into this quarter. So that's going to be it. Voltec cannot stop this AM offense. This AM offense is pretty friggin' dynamic. So can't really blame him. 49 21 final for AM. Look at the player stats. So Farrell, Texas AM, Wiegman. Wiegman, six touchdowns. Tavon Austin, 187 and four touchdowns in his final game. Percy Harvin, 74 yards. But Tavon Austin, wow. Would have liked to see, you know, something close at the end there, but I'm just not going to watch blowouts where they're up, you know, 20 and sit here and when it obviously doesn't matter. So there we go, guys. We're going to sim to the end of bowl season here. Then we're going to look at just the final stats for this season and their final stats over their career. Let me know once we look at their final stats for their career, who you guys think, leave it in the comments. Who do you think was the MVP, the best receiver out of this sim? It'll be very interesting when we look at our team stats to kind of take a look at that. Actually, let's look at all Americans too. Be interesting. Last year, we had three of the four first and second teams. I don't think we're going to have that this year. Randy Moss, first team All-American, then Emmanuel Henderson and second team yeah, we only had one guy on the All-American squad this year. Oh, let's see if let's see if Moss won the Bolitnikov actually. Randy Moss. Bal oh my gosh, I just seen Randy Moss's stats up in the top. They are insane. Holy crap. Holy Randy. Um, yeah. So I guess this this young kid played all right with Randy Moss because he put up 1,964 yards, 32 touchdowns, 32 touchdowns, 100. Is that the best receiving season ever? Wow. Uh, just under 2,000 yards and over 30 touchdowns for Randy Moss. So I'm going to say Randy Moss lived up to the hype. Let's yeah, Maybe we'll give everyone a hype rating. Yeah, maybe we'll do that with their final stats. Uh, Larry Fitz, 1,200 yards. Finally, one of these two at least had a good year. 89 yards per game. AJ basically never had a great year but at least one of them pulled something out peter warwick that's what i was after 1300 yards 13 touchdowns his last year 93 a game we will take that georgia we don't care about anymore calvin johnson broke our heart and left lsu 600 yards like he doubled up the next closest receivers so you can't be too mad at it but Devonte just very disappointing career overall at lsu uh we look at northwestern jerry rice oh he kind of slowed down he was off to a really good start 74 yards per game he lost his qb though so i think that was a big part of it go to nebraska Julio, 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 60 yards. He had one great year. I think if we look at his career, he had one, his freshman year was amazing. Then he just lost his quarterback and was around 700 yards every year. So that's just really disappointing. I, I knew from the get-go he did pick the wrong school. Desmond got kind of screwed over for his senior year. They lost their quarterback and decided we are going to run the ball basically every play and we're going to average like over 250 rushing yards a game. So Desi kind of got screwed his last year, but overall, I think he won a national championship, played well. Okay, Texas, I think... I think Jamar might have had, wow, 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 760 yards. That is tough, Jamar Chase. So Jamar really had one good year last year. He had a good start to this year and fell off a mat. Wow. Okay, a &M. Noah Thomas just stole all the shine. I don't know. Tavon, 863. Percy broke 1,000, which we like to see. 87 yards per game. We will take that from Percy. And then lastly, we got SC. And SC took a big step back. So Tim Brown lost kind of his main receiver role to Michael Crabtree, who had an amazing year, 14 touchdowns, 105 per game. Okay, now we're going to look at career stats for all of these guys. Obviously, we can't look at it for Calvin Johnson or Justin Blackman, but all the other guys. So Boise State, actually, I think we could probably go by, I think if we go by all NCAA, these guys should be, they've all stayed for four years. They should be all right around the top. Who had the most yards in in our sim it was randy moss 5200 yards in four seasons by far the most almost a thousand more than jerry rice who is in second then just behind him peter warwick um if we keep going down julio jones so really these three were kind of a cut above then yeah we go all the way down to julio jones who really only had one good year tim brown tim brown had i think like his yeah, it's just his senior year. Where's oh, you can't see his 2014 year. Yeah, his so he didn't really play his freshman year. His sophomore and junior were really good, and his senior was just okay. Crabtree right around there. 
Tavon. I want to look at I want to look at Randy's just four year career actually too. So Randy, 847 as a freshman, then 1311 in 1900, 66 touchdowns. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy for Mr. Randy Moss, who had the most receptions. Randy, Percy Harvin averaged 18 yards per touch. So every time Percy touched the ball, he's a freak show. Randy. So I mean, it, it's pretty cut and dry. Randy Moss has had the best career. Um, okay, this guy actually had an insane career too. Holy crap, he had 2,100 yards this year. Look at his last three yards. It's a man years. Emmanuel Henderson. Crazy. His career average is 140 a game. But out of our guys, Randy Moss clearly was the best. I also want to look at just kick and punt return. Maybe one of our guys was a stud there. Nothing. None of the big names for kick. No, this this Charles Jackson was a killer for Bama. But uh, yeah, none of our guys were, were big time kicker, punt returners either all right so that's their career stats i think it's bar none randy moss mvp did go to boise state i would have liked to see him play tougher competition but it is what it is okay we got one more thing on the docket guys we are gonna go look once they declare for the draft we'll get to see what round they were drafted in so we'll take a quick look at that then that is it now if you guys like this video and you want to see anything like it in the future i have another cool plan for something along these lines but if you have any ideas anything like that definitely leave that in the comments as well okay if we go to players leaving we go to all teams and we go by wide receiver so randy moss first round pick desmond howard first round pick percy harvin first round pick Kendrick Law, who's not one of our guys. AJ Green, second round. Peter Work, second round. Jamar Chase, second round. Larry Fitz, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, all stop falling to the third. Julio Jones in the fourth. Imagine if you were grabbing Julio Jones in the fourth. Crabtree. Devontae Smith goes undrafted. Tavon Austin goes undrafted. And I think that was it for our guys. Yeah, that was it. So that's where they all ended up, guys. So Randy Moss, he might have been the fucking first overall pick, this guy. So that is it, guys. Like I said, let me know if you have any other ideas down in the comments below. So what did you think of the sim? What sim should we do next? And if you like this, then check out this video right here where I make the same video, but with the 15 best running backs of all time.